Okay, so this is just a video going over the group work and some important things I think you need to know before um, before you go into your quiz this week. So one is um, make a flow chart with reactions we've learned in chapter 15. So I'm not going to do this because I think it's more beneficial for you to do it, but I think um, however you want to organize it, it's important to know electrophilic aromatic substitution, know the mechanisms for that. There's halogenation, sulfonation, nitration. Um, those are the big ones. For Then we have Ferdell Crafts. And however you want to organize this or however you want to make sense of it, you should know what reactions these are, what uh, materials you need for them. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit. What materials you need for them, like what reagents you need, and then also um, the mechanism. Sorry, if I'm a little spacey, so sorry if I lost track, if I uh, repeated myself there, but I think those are the big things for those. Then we have Fidel Crafts acylation and alkylation. Alkylation. And then we also learned about hot KMNO4 which um, does the cleaving thing to turn basically anything with an R group into carboxylic acid. And then we also learned about, uh, I think it was Clemenson reduction, which is similar to the Wolf-Kishner reduction that we've done in the past. Basically, it just gets rid of ketones. I think that's all of their reactions. Honestly, I don't 100% know, but um, it's important for you to take time to go through and review your notes and see what all have we learned, which have similar mechanisms, what do I need to group together? What, you know, what are the big takeaways from this chapter? That's a really helpful way for you to study. And that's why we always have a question like this on the group work. Okay, next question two, draw the mechanism and predict the products of the following reaction. So, um, you know, normally I talk about when you're looking at a reaction, how do you know what happens? And when I think about what happens on this, uh, this type of reaction, I don't have to go through my whole list because I see that there's a benzene ring and usually benzene rings can only go through a few different types of reactions. And we learned most of those in this chapter. So, you know, normally I talk about, oh, think about if this is acid base, is this um, substitution or elimination, you know, go through all those steps. When I see a benzene ring, I'm like, wait, this can only be a few reactions. It could basically be a nitration, halogenation, sulfonation, or fidel crafts reaction. So, I can actually narrow it down to those. And in this case, because there's a Lewis acid and um, an alkyl halide, I know that's going to be a Friedel Crafts alkylation specifically. But Friedel Crafts still actually goes through a very similar mechanism as the um, sulfonation nitration that we've already done. The electrophile is generated. And in this case, you have your. Uh, Lewis acid and your chlorine. And this will attack here and it will make a carbocation. But because it's a primary carbocation that's very unstable, it will immediately rearrange to a secondary carbocation. <clears throat> so I guess I should have drawn the rearrangement down here. Sorry. So you have your carbocation, it will undergo a halide shift to um, the secondary carbocation. And now you've generated an electrophile, and the benzene will be able to attack that electrophile. So the benzene will come in here and attack, and you'll get your addition. And it's going to add right there where that carbocation is. So that's carbon 2, 3, 4, 5. That's carbon 2 of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Two, three, four, five. I think you should always count your carbons on these whenever you like move carbon chains around. It's really easy to lose uh, carbon. So it adds right there, but you know, this benzene ring has hydrogens all the way around it. They're all implied hydrogens. So when you add this, this hydrogen is still here and this hydrogen is still here, but that's only three bonds to this carbon. So we're going to put a carbocation right there. So then you have your base in solution. It's this AlCl4 that you generated when you are also generating your electrophile. And that AlCl4, most likely it could be another base, honestly, in solution. But I usually draw as the um, AlCl4 will then come and AlCl4 minus is going to come and take this hydrogen and fill in where that carbocation was. And that regenerates our 
aromaticity. And that's our Friedel Crafts alkylation. Okay, uh, question three, draw the mechanism of the following reaction. So this, again, I see a benzene ring. I know it can only be from this chapter. And if I see a chlorine with an AlCl3, it's either chlorination or how, what? Yeah, chlorination or Fidel Crafts reaction. In this case, I know because it's on the acyl group, this is a Fidel Crafts acylation. So the first step is we generate the electrophile. And this electrophile, I think, is like kind of the weirdest one. <laughs> But you have your, uh, it's the same basic step where your chlorine bond breaks and comes and attacks here. But the resonance structure on this is kind of weird. So this is the thing that you get. And actually, when I'm doing Friedel Crafts reactions, just to make sure that I'm attacking at the right spot, I draw my benzene attacking this structure. But it is in resonance with. A lone pair coming down. I think this is called the acylium ion, but I don't know for sure off the top of my head. Um, so the lone pair comes down, and now this oxygen is positive, and this carbon has all of its electrons filled in. So that actually stabilizes, and also it doesn't undergo rearrangement because of the stability here. Then your benzene will attack. And like I said, you can draw benzene attacking either of these structures. But I saw draw the benzene attacking right here because it's easier for me then to know where this is going to bond. You know, I just, it's going to go right there. And so that makes it easier for me. Oh, this double bond is not there. The product I drew was wrong. So sorry. It adds right here. And then we have carbon one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, two, three, one two this is carbon one two three four not five i was like that doesn't look right and then on this one on carbon two there's a methyl group okay so we have that but we still have our hydrogen here and a positive charge here so then we'll get our base and just redrawing that structure oh, i always do that i draw the full benzene ring ignore that that's a mistake um, there's a carbocation here, and then the base in solution, probably your AlCl4, but any base is fine. We'll come and take that hydrogen and fill in your electrons to restore aromaticity, and then you get your acylation reaction. And if you wanted to then get rid of this uh, carbonyl group, you could do a reduction. Clemenson reduction or wolf kishner reduction would get rid of that and make it just an R group. Okay. The next question is, what are the limitations of friedel crafts reactions? So one of them we've already seen is actually alkylation only. So only alkylation, not acylation, will rearrange. Okay, so alkylation only has rearrangement. And then the next limitation of friedel crafts reaction is, and I honestly think a lot of reactions do this, but... Once you have an electron withdrawing group on your um, benzene ring, the reaction um, electron withdrawing group makes reactions slow down or not work. So I wrote fail. So if you have an electron withdrawing group on your benzene ring, it doesn't have a lot of electrons to do the attacking. It doesn't have a high electron density. So um, that's going to make it to where the reaction just pretty much doesn't doesn't go if you have an electron withdrawing group. A lot of reactions fail when there's not an when there's an electron withdrawing group, but acylations and alkylations are especially sensitive to that. And then the next one is you can't use um, aryl or vinyl halide. So what that means is you can't basically use a halide that's right off of a double bond as your um, electrophile. Like either of these wouldn't work because the halogen is right on the double bond. Okay, so those are the alkylations. This is usually a test question. People will usually ask that. So I encourage you to know those before your quizzes and exams uh, because they come into play. And one of the ways they come into play is right here. So rank the following molecules in terms of most reactive in a friedel crafts reaction to the least reactive. So most reactive to least reactive. So the most reactive is going to be the one with, I always use benzene as my benchmark. And if there's an electron withdrawing group on it, it's going to be less reactive. So electron withdrawing group, less reactive. 
if there's an electron donating group, it's going to be more reactive. And then like less or more reactive than benzene. Benzene's always in the middle in my mind. So this one right here has an electron withdrawing group. So this is going to be less reactive. And this one has an electron donating group, that um, carbon group right there. So this is going to be more reactive. And then benzene is in the middle. So the most reactive is one and then three for benzene and then two for the nitro group nitrobenzene. Okay. Question six is consider the reaction sequence below. Neither will have a high yield when performed in an organic chemistry lab. However, one will give a better yield than the other. Why will neither reaction sequence have a high yield? So when I look at these reaction sequences, you know, again, what's happening, what's our end goal here? It's easiest for me to draw these out and like think of them on my own. So if you have a benzene ring and then you do a nitration on it, HNO3 and H2SO4, um, you'll get the nitro group. It doesn't matter where you put it. And then that is an extremely electron drawing group. So if you try to do your isolation, that's a limitation of the isolation. It would maybe work a little, but it would not work well because nitro groups are so withdrawing. There's like a positive charge on that nitrogen right there. So it probably wouldn't do great. And that's going to go to the ortho meta position. So you would maybe end up with some of these, but it would be pretty small yield and not great. This other one, you start with the benzene and then you get, um, that's an acylation reaction. So you'll get an acyl group and then you'll do a nitration. And again, this is actually an electron withdrawing group as well. So it's still going to be meta directing and it's actually not going to be very high yield because that's an electron withdrawing group too, uh, but it is less electron withdrawing group than nitro. So I'm going to say neither of these will have a high yield because they have an, I don't know why I started way over there, an electron withdrawing group, which means low electron density So poor attack on electrophile. So if you have an electron withdrawing group, there's not electron density to do the attack on the electrophile, so the reaction's not going to go as well. But I think that um, this one would go better because nitro is more electron withdrawing than um, the acyl group. So this one would probably be better than this one, which has the nitro going on first. So that's something that's different about this chapter that you haven't really seen before is that this chapter, you have to not only think about what reactions are going to happen, but which reaction is going to get the thing that we want in the right order. Okay. Draw the mechanism of the following reaction. So this is a sulfonation. And actually, uh, for me, it helps to write out H2SO4 is actually in equilibrium. It's not just like, it doesn't just exist as H2SO4. It's in equilibrium with, um, sorry, my equilibrium arrows look terrible. H3O plus and HSO4 minus, but also um, this H3O plus can break down into, wait, actually I think I did that wrong. H2SO4 is in equilibrium with water, H2O, SO3, and H2SO4 minus. I think it's, it'll be in equilibrium with all three of these things. These will combine to make H2SO4. So that's the equilibrium. So the big thing is you need SO4, Three, which looks like this. And it'll have H3O plus possibly in solution. It'll have H2SO4, wherever it gets it from, it will be able to take a hydrogen. So then you'll have SO and then this hydrogen that attacked will be O H. So you can think of this double bond as being what attacked, or you can think of the lone pair attacking and the double bond then filling in. But um, that's the structure that you have. So that's HSO4 minus. So when I drew this H3O plus with H2SO4, 
when you get the SO3 and H2SO4, you get HSO4 minus. So I think that this is kind of confusing. I get confused a lot of times when I'm like, wait, how does this get generated? But as long as you know you have that SO3 that gets generated by equilibrium plus acid somewhere, um, probably from the concentrated acid that's present, then you'll have your electrophile. And when this goes and fills in here, this is the sulfur is actually positively charged because it does it lost a bond right there. So then step two is your benzene is going to attack your electrophile. So benzene attacks the electrophile. And we get S O O O H. So this lo should look familiar to you now. This is the group that is um, your sulfonation. This is what your uh, sulf sulfonyl group looks like. There's still an H here and a positive charge. And then a base that's in solution, maybe that HSO4 minus, will come and take this and fill in. That's your step three, the elimination. So you get S O O. OH and your aromaticity is restored. So um, I do that kind of out of order, but that's the overall mechanism of your sulfonation. Oh, dang it. I did a benzene attacking, but actually it's not a benzene as your starting material. Sorry, I'm all over the place. We're at a conference in San Diego. I got a little bit of jet lag. Your starting material is actually this um, this ether group, it has this oxygen right here. And the lone pairs on the oxygen make me think that's going to be a para director, ortho para director. Could be either. I'm going to pick para just because it's um, sterically kind of big to have this group. So that actually will be your final product. So when it attacks, it'll attack from the ortho or para position. Sorry, I totally didn't even see that. If it was at the ortho position, it'd be right here. So either of those would be appropriate. So now it's asking, um, where are the carbocations located on the resonance structure? So it basically this is wants to go over why is this ortho para directing rather than meta directing. And this is something that I think is really important to know is if you have an electron donating group, so I'm just going to say you have any electron donating group and your uh, benzene attacks at the ortho position, you have your electrophile and a carbocation, your positive charge will uh, be in resonance. So here's your electrophile, here's your electron donating group, your carbocation will end up here. And then it'll have another resonance structure and your carbocation will actually end up right on your electron donating group. And that's good because your electron donating group is positive. So you want it to be, or your electron, what? Your carbocation is positive. And so you want your electron donating group to be there to donate electron density to the positive, uh, to the carbocation on the electron donating group. So because of that ability, it's going to go to the ortho position. Now, if you had a meta substitution, the carbocation actually misses that. And so there's not electron density being donated to the carbocation. So that's not great. It is good if you have an electron withdrawing group, though, because um, if you have an electron withdrawing group, you don't want a positive charge right next to something that's already taking electrons away. And I actually went ahead and drew out the structures for this. So... Here's an electron donating group. If you have a substitution in your electrophile at the ortho position, here's your positive charge. This is what I just drew, and it'll move around and end up on the positive charge of the electron donating group. So that's good because the electron donating group is right on the carbocation. If you have a meta substitution, the carbocation you see misses that electron donating group. So the positive charge isn't stabilized at all by the carbocation. And then for para position, same thing here. You have a positive charge that goes right on the electron donating group, and that's good. You get the same structures with an electron withdrawing group, but if the electron withdrawing group, you don't want the electron withdrawing group to be right on the positive charge because the electron withdrawing group is already taking electrons away. So if you put a positive charge next to an electron withdrawing group, it's going to be really, really destabilized. So it's much preferred for the ortho para substitution for the carbocation. All right. So um, 
that's the resonance structures here. Uh, it asks if the initial group on the starting material is electron withdrawing or electron donating. I said electron donating because it doesn't have this partial positive of the uh, carbonyl group right next to the ring. It has this oxygen that can donate electrons to the ring. And there's actually even a resonance structure on this that I didn't draw because it's unique to this kind of molecule where when you have your positive charge right here on this one, you, these can actually come down and you'll get an extra resonance structure with the um, this right here and the oxygen positive. So your carbocation actually goes even one more place. Okay, so that's an electron donating group due to the um, the lone pairs making an electron donating group. If it was if it weren't for those lone pairs, that could be an electron withdrawing group. But because of those electrons, it acts like a methoxy, like a donating group. So that stabilizes. Stabilizes, as we saw right here, the carbocation. And it's orthoparadirecting. So it's important to understand why things are orthoparadirectors and also to know what things are generally meta versus orthoparadirectors. Oh, and we made a mistake here. This one should be, how would these answers change if you had this as your donating group, as your starting material instead? And the biggest thing is there is a resonance structure on here that this is partially positive, right? So this is a negative charge and this is a positive charge. We've seen this carbonyl resonance structure a bunch. And with that positive charge right there, there's always a partial positive when these are in resonance with each other. So a positive charge right next to your benzene ring is actually an electron withdrawing group. So it'd be an electron withdrawing group, it would be a meta director, and you'd actually have your ring destabilized. Um, so it would be the opposite of what we had with the attachment on either side. So it is important to know don't just memorize like, oh, an ester means that it's electron donating or withdrawing. Make sure you know it's the carbonyl that makes it the carbonyl or in this case, the oxygen that makes it electron withdrawing or electron donating. Okay, now we just have a bunch of multi-step reactions. And again, like I said before, it actually really is nice when you have um, benzene come up because they can only do a few reactions. So we know that this benzene is going to do a substitution reaction. The um, carbocation will be generated. This will attack and this will go here. So you'll end up with, oh wait, that's gone. A positive charge right there. And then your benzene um, will attack that positive. And you get this and then your base will come and take a hydrogen from here fill in and that's a terrible benzene ring but that's okay then you get this structure and then this is a clemenson reduction so i talked about that earlier clemenson reduction basically just boop eliminates that carbonyl group you don't need to know the mechanism i don't think for that it just turns it into an alkyl chain so that's really useful when you um, want to get an alkyl group at a primary attachment like if you tried to do this primarily like have a um, if you wanted to just do this plus um, like this and do a Fidel Crafts alkylation instead of acylation the positive charge would form here and then it would rearrange so you could not get the primary carbocation so if you want a primary attachment like this you have to go through this route Okay, the next one, again, uh, this actually is an old thing that we learned in our reactions of alcohols. I think that was chapter 10. And that's if you have a carbonyl group, um, or sorry, if you have an alcohol group, this SOCl2 will turn it into a chlorine. And then that's going to do another Friedel Crafts reaction. So the electrophile will be generated. And then the benzene will tack on itself. So that's cool right here and there is the positive charge but aromaticity will be restored so i won't draw it all out for you let's make sure we didn't lose our carbons one two three four five okay 
So this would be your final structure is this attacks itself. And um, this becomes the electrophile. And then you get your, I didn't draw it out, but I can. If this attacks, oh, this bonds and you get a positive charge right here. And then your, benz, then your base will come and steal the hydrogen that's here and fill it in. Okay, so I'm going to say this would be no reaction because this is so deactivating. But if it did react, uh, this is a nitro group. So it um, is a meta director. So your substitution would happen at the meta position right here. And um, if you have a halogen and an Lewis acid of any kind, it's halogenation. So you'll get a bromine here. But I think there would be poor yield of this. It'd be a pretty low... Um, pretty low reaction yield. Okay, and then now we have another halogenation, benzene with a halogen and a Lewis acid. So that must mean this goes to the ortho position or it could go to the meta position. I'm not drawing out the mechanisms for these because we've done it a lot, but ortho, meta, para. Either of those would be correct. Uh, hopefully you already know the mechanisms for these and you can draw those resonant structures around the ring. Okay, question nine. Which of the given reaction sequences would produce the following structure and why? Okay, so for these again, I always draw them out. So we have uh, this ring and then a nitro. And then that is a, looks like Friedel Crafts alkylation. So if you had a nitro and then the Friedel Crafts alkylation, nitro is ortho meta directing. So it would go like this, but it would happen in poor yield. The reaction might not go at all. And then if you have this one, the first step is the Friedel Crafts um, alkylation. So it would attach right here. And then with the nitro, and the um, H2SO4, the nitration, this is now actually an ortho para director because it's electron donating. So it should happen at the ortho position, either right here or the para position. So I usually work these out first, um, just like not even looking at the answer or what they're asking me for, ortho meta para. And I, um, oh, I hope you saw that. So you have the alkylation, the nitration will happen at the met ortho or the para position because the alkylation is an electron donating group. So I draw these out and then I go back and look and see this is a per, uh, ortho substituted nitration, right? So this one gave us meta substituted. They're ortho meta from each other. And this one is ortho and this one is ortho para. So this is what we have here. So only the second reaction will produce it. So again, this brings back to not only is it important for you to know what reagents will produce the thing that you're looking for, but also your, you need to know what order you're using those reagents in to get your desired product because it, um, it can substitute either at the ortho position or the meta position if you have a donating group or an electron drawing group first. Also, this will just happen in better yield because you have the electron donating first and then the nitration. Okay, and then on the very last page, we have um, determining whether these compounds are aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. So this is a review because we found on the quiz that we are still struggling with this. So the thing, three things I look for is a ring, an unbroken ring of p orbitals. I look for four in plus two pi electrons. So that's two if n equals zero, six if n equals one, 10 if n equals two, and 14 if n equals three, and so on and so forth. That's the number of electrons we're looking for. And then last but not least, I look for its planar, and it's usually planar unless it's 10 aniline. So um, let's go. On this, the first thing I look for is an unbroken ring of p orbitals. There's always, these are sp2 hybridized. So there's a p orbital here and here. And then this is sp3 hybridized. The lone pair could go either way, but this being sp3 hybridized means that this is non-aromatic. It doesn't even meet the first condition. Now number two, again, if it has a double bond, the electrons in the double bond are making up these p orbitals here. 
And then a carbocation is sp2 hybridized because it has an implied hydrogen bonded there, right? So it's only got three bonds, three things means it's sp2 hybridized. So it does meet the first condition. Boom. The next thing we have to do is count up how many electrons are present. And there's two, four, six from the pi bonds. There's two in each one of these pi bonds. So six is on our list. If n equals one, that's six. So it does the second one and it's not 10 aniline. So this is aromatic. Now we have the same structure, but instead of a carbocation, I'm gonna zoom in a little here. Instead of a carbocation, it's a carb anion. So um, we still have the unbroken ring of p orbitals, and then this one could go either way, right? Lone pairs are weird. They can go either way. So there's a p orbital here, 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 all the way around. But this one um, lone pair could go either way. If there's a ring of p orbitals the rest of the way, then we'll count up the electrons and decide about that one. So the electrons here are 2, 4, 6. There's already 6 pi electrons, which meets our goal. So if this lone pair went into a p orbital, it would get us to pi electrons, to eight pi electrons, which would be four in, not, which is not good. That's anti-aromatic. So if this lone pair goes into a p orbital, it'd be anti-aromatic. I think it's possible that to increase stability, actually that lone pair would go into a hybrid orbital and be non-aromatic because it's more stable if it is in the hybrid orbital being non-aromatic. If it's anti-aromatic, it's significantly less stable. So I think it would be non-aromatic, but either of these answers would be acceptable. Okay, um, and then if we go to this one, there's a P orbital all the way around. There's all kinds of electron donating groups on this, so that's interesting. Um, P orbitals all the way around, so that meets our first criteria. But we only have four pi electrons, which is four times one. So this is not made our second, so it must be anti-aromatic. Um, and then for the very last one, right away, I see this is sp3 hybridized. There's two things bonded to it, so this must be non-aromatic. So it doesn't even meet the, meet the first condition. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you want me to go over, please reach out and let me know. Good luck studying.